welcome to Kohut's Corner. I'm Mr. Kohut, principal of Swapscott High School. Let's take a few minutes to review our big blue bees. Be mad, that's masked and distanced. Be patient, be where your feet are, be where you're supposed to be, be kind, and of course, be a bowler, not a dice roller. This year's Kohut's Corner episodes have introduced first year staff members to the school community. And continuing with that theme, we have science teacher, Mr. Mr. Colburn, joining us on Kohut's Corner. Mr. Colburn, welcome to Kohut's Corner. Oh, thank you, glad to be here. It's great to have you. So um, could you just tell us a little bit about your, your experience before coming, to, coming here to teach at Swampscott High School? Maybe a little bit about, about your uh, career and then also about your interests, that kind of thing, just so the folks at home, the viewing audience can get to know you. Yeah, uh, so I, uh, this is my 11th year teaching. Uh, my first position was actually at Ipswich High School. That was a, uh, a, just a temporary one. And then from there, I taught at Mystic Valley Regional Charter School uh, for a total of uh, eight years. And then I taught two years at Lawrence High School as well. Um, so, and then, yeah, that, that actually broke up the eight years at Mystic Valley. There was five years at Mystic Valley, two at Lawrence High School and then three back at Mystic Valley. I see. So um, I find myself uh, often reflecting back on, on my teaching days. I think everybody knows I was a teacher here for a long time. And I definitely have a lot of sort of favorite lessons that I would really look forward to teaching. What would you say are your, your favorite lessons that, that you teach? Uh, my favorite lessons are definitely on genetics. Uh, I think that uh, it's really easily applicable uh, and students take a lot of interest in it. Uh, they like to see, you know, how they ended up with certain traits from their parents and traits maybe their parents didn't have and uh, end up being recessive traits. Uh, so that's always really exciting. The students get really into it. There's a million questions and uh, it really lends itself to, you know, making really interactive lessons. Uh, so yeah, genetics, uh, Punnett squares, those are generally my favorite lessons to teach. Sure. And I would imagine there's a lot of, of sort of content related to the pandemic that you could you could teach genetics through that content as well right so yeah know, so especially to like vaccines and that sort of stuff and, and yeah, yeah as we've been talking about um you know you can talk about uh yeah the expression of you know viral proteins instead of the expression of your normal cell proteins and um you know why why viruses are so hard to treat as opposed to like a bacterial infection and yeah we've been able to to work that in quite a bit. That's great. Another question that, that I've asked uh, other teachers who, who have come on the show, dream lessons. So something that you would love to teach, but maybe you haven't had a chance to, and it doesn't have to be in science. It doesn't have to be in biology. It could be, it could be another, another thing. Like for example, I always really liked, I always, I would always refer to like pop culture in my lessons. I taught English for a long time and I, I thought it would be great to be able to kind of teach uh, uh to teach literature through pop culture in some way and i never really was able to kind of wrap my mind around it and of course you know that wasn't in the content um so i'd like refer to it but i always thought it would be really interesting to be able to sort of do that um at least within the past like i don't know 50 years in american pop culture is there is there is there something like dream lesson and by the way that's sounds like a dream for me but the kids are probably like that's not so boring um is there a dream lesson, something that you would really love to teach, but maybe you haven't had a chance to? Uh, yeah, my so my undergraduate degrees in microbiology and viruses were my, you know, th those were what got me into microbiology to start with. Oh, wow. Uh, so if I could do, uh, you know, a dream lesson would be doing something with viral genetics, maybe working a field trip in there where you could do something with like the CDC, kids could see what goes into uh, yeah, just like all the process of identifying a virus, of, of making a vaccine for a virus, of uh, what it looks like to work with viruses that are different biohazard levels. Um, those, a, a lesson like that where it would it'd be an off, it'd be a field trip, but uh, that'd be like my dream lesson. So, it sounds really cool. I mean, maybe we can make something happen. Yeah, it, uh, hopefully is uh, yeah everything opens back up and the CDC yeah. is not quite as busy. Uh, maybe <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. does CDC 
do they have like offices in every state or is it like a regional thing? I'm just curious. So yeah, the the main ones in Atlanta, but they are, I mean, they're kind of everywhere. They have branches everywhere. Sure, sure, sure. Great. Well, Mr. Colborn, thanks for joining us on Cohut's Corner. Have a great afternoon. Oh, thank you for having me and uh, ha have a great afternoon yourself. This year, members of Diversifier Narrative, or DAWN, have been working with learning communities to teach students about race, how race impacts education, and how race impacts other aspects of our society. Hi, everyone. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Maggie Jensen. I'm a junior at Sum Scott High School. I just got involved with Diversifier Narrative this year, um, and I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, um, I'm Madison. I'm also a junior here at SHS, and I also just got involved with uh, Don this year, and I'm also very excited and happy to be here. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a senior, and I got involved with Diverse Fire Narrative this summer as well, and I'm really happy to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about what the, the mission of Don and also how Dawn um, came about. I mean, I know there's there's a little a little bit of this happened sort of, I guess the impetus, right, was outside of, of Swamp Scott High School. Um, but tell the audience a little bit about what Dawn is and, and how it started. Alex, do you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so basically, Dawn was started by a group of students in Stanford University, and they provide a lot of online resources about how to communicate with your school about anti-racist education and sort of just going about um, educating people. Like um, we have an Instagram, we try to be really, we try to educate people on whatever issues we think are really prevalent in our community. And we're very fortunate enough to work with um, SOCA, so the Students of Color Association at Swamp Scott High School. Um, and unfortunately, one of the president couldn't be here, but uh, him, Sergio. So they work, they have helped us with this presentation and helped us and given us so many, so much feedback and have helped us so much create these presentations. And um, without, you know, the collaboration between Don and Soka, none of this would have happened. So I just wanna quickly shout out uh, Soka because they couldn't be here. But um, basically we were just trying to find out ways in which we could help the community because we obviously know teachers are doing so much already and we can't expect teachers to know things. We can't expect teachers to know everything. So um, we started like late summer, right around the time of the George Floyd protests. And we were working a lot during the first semester with um, like the departments, like the English and history department, seeing like what changes we could make. Um, we added like more books by people of color in order to, you know, talk about their experiences because they're often marginalized in the curriculum in English and in history, we were trying to figure out uh, talking about ways of different perspectives. And I think it's just mostly trying to make Swamp Scott more aware that there is a world outside Swamp Scott that although Swamp Scott is very white and that is true, but I think it's really important to have students um, in the high school really educated about things that are happening in our community within Boston, within like the Medco program. I think um, we were trying to highlight these issues and if Maggie or Madison want to take over and just talk a bit about. It. Yeah, so for sure. I think Alex said it perfectly, but um, one thing that I would add is just, we also just want to amplify um, voices that aren't paid attention to or aren't heard as, as, as much as they would have. Um, and so we, we want everyone to be heard. We just want school curriculums to be more inclusive of every single voice. Um, and, and, and that's what we're working on. I completely agree with everything that's been said. I think uh, just getting involved with Don, everyone has been you know super welcoming and we're all really about sort of that uh, amplifying the marginalized voices or just making sure that everyone's included in the school community. And I think awareness is something that's really important in what we're trying to do. Well, thanks. Thanks, everyone. And, and if students are interested in joining Dawn, uh, how do they go about joining? So they can contact our Instagram. I think it's Dawn, oh, Diversify Your Narrative Swamp Scott okay. um, on Instagram. But I th we also have a Gmail if they, if they want to get involved in that. I think it's just donswampscott at gmail.com, okay. all undercase. 
Um, but yeah, we would love to have more new members. We want to keep this going on. Great. Okay. And also there are like uh, student of color association meetings if people want to go to those or just to hear perspectives from people you normally wouldn't hear in the Swampscott community those happen I, I think every other Tuesday I'm pretty sure um, and they're during lunch so they're open to anyone um, allies students of color just anyone if you want to join. And that can be uh, in person or remote right once we once we return. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks to Mr. Colburn and to Don for joining me on Cohut's Corner. I hope many of you here at Swampscott High School when we reopen for full in-person learning on April 5th. And I will see you all in the next Cohut's Corner. Bye, Thank everyone. You so much. Bye. Thank you.